beginning at verse 45. Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 45. And I wonder this afternoon, if we would all stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. Amen. I won't keep you on your feet for long, just nine verses. Matthew chapter 27, beginning at verse 45. And the Word of the Lord reads in this fashion. <clears throat> Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. The rest said, Let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quake and the rocks rent. And the graves were opened, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. Amen. I have a simple message, message for us this afternoon entitled, quite simply, Good Morning, Whosoever. Amen. Good morning, whosoever. Would you bow your heads with me? Master, we love you today. We're so grateful, God, for these lovely sisters who have made an effort to come to this place and be with this work at this time, God, to be a blessing to us, to help us reach out to our community here in Atlanta. Master, today we're so grateful that there are some committed people. We may be fragmented all over the country. We may not all be part of one given church in any one given location. But God, there are hearts and minds that want to serve you and want to know you all over this country. And we're grateful, God, for godly fellowship. We're grateful, God, for Christian love and unity that brings us together and, and binds our hearts in such a fashion, oh God, that when we must be apart, from one another we miss one another we miss that fellowship and God when we're together we relish it we appreciate it we enjoy it master we ask that you would allow the time that these ladies would be with us today here and at Burkhart's God that you would allow this time to be a special time let every word that's spoken everything that's done be for your glory lift up every heart God that might hear this simple message for we desire your anointing more than anything to stay God there's there's nothing I can say that could help anyone inside or outside of this room except for your divine anointing. And therefore, we plead this hour with you, God, to allow your anointing to rest upon us. Use us, O oh God, fragile as we may be, imperfect God though we may be. For we ask it in the wonderful, lovely, glorious name of Jesus. Meet every need, God, according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Loose your blessing this hour. So we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated. Amen. The Bible tells us in the Old Testament how lovely on the mountains are the feet of them who bring good news. Amen. Anybody that's been part of Grace Oasis for any period of time has heard me say on many occasions that uh, the preacher that you hear at, when you go to church on Sunday, or the preacher that you hear on the television, or the preacher that you're hearing on the radio, is preaching anything to you that does not fall on your ears as good news. Hello now. They are not preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on now. I don't know what they're preaching. I don't care what they're preaching. All I know is that the gospel of Jesus Christ is the most exciting, vibrant news that could ever fall upon the ears of a fallen humanity. And when a preacher preaches the gospel, the word gospel, 
gospel means good news. Hallelujah. And the feet of them that carry the gospel are beautiful, the Bible said. Got a lot of churches today with preachers with ugly feet up in that old pulpit. Come on now. Because the news they're carrying is not good news. They're not telling you you can be saved. They're telling you, my friend, you're hopelessly lost. My Lord, have mercy. Not bringing you a word of hope, but bringing you a word of condemnation. And I'm here to tell you today, so long as there's breath in my body, I've made up my mind, committed myself to honoring my calling and preaching the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And, oh, God, let it ever fall from my lips like good news. Hallelujah. Let it ever be words that will excite the heart of every hearer <laughs> to know that God loves them. To understand the extent of God's love, to see without any blurred vision clearly what God went through and what God did in order to manifest His love toward us. The Bible saying, God manifests His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Hallelujah. Oh, you know, I think of a time when my great-grandmother had a neighbor named Mary, and Mary was a miserable old bat of a lady. Oh, she was miserable. One of them old ladies, you know, crab and complain about everything. The kids, my grandmother had a bunch of grandchildren and great-grandchildren. They would come over to visit, and we'd be playing in the yard, and old Mary next door be crabbing and griping that the kids are making too much noise and the kids are doing this and the kids are doing that. And I remember how that Mary used to drive my grandmother crazy. My grandmother would say, oh, for crying out loud, why can't that old lady just calm down? You know, it's just kids playing, you know. You know, it's easy to hate somebody when they're offensive to you. It's easy to dislike somebody when they don't act just right and, and, and when their behavior kind of troubles you and disturbs you. But my little Pentecostal, Holy Ghost-filled grandmother wasn't about to hate old Mary. No, instead she decided, I'm going to make an extra special effort to love that old gal. And every once in a while, she'd go over with something she baked, or she'd go over with dinner and say, I was wondering if I could sit and just have dinner with you. I'm all by myself, and I notice you are too, and I thought you might like company. Oh, how Mary's attitude changed. All of a sudden, somebody was showing love to a very unlovable woman. Hello now. Oh, when you show love to the unlovable, it's amazing how lovable they suddenly can become. I've got good news for you children today. I'm not here to tell you God hates you. I'm not here to tell you God wants to send you to hell. I'm not here to tell you God judges you for who you are or your circumstance in life. I'm here to tell you today that God has made a way for you to have clear access to Him without interruption. He's made a move in your direction. He manifested His love toward you when you were still unlovable. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And God wants you to become lovable. Hallelujah. And the only way we can become lovable is to let God's loving behavior and action toward us manifest itself. Come on now. And then suddenly, Grandma bringing over that pie and bringing over that stew changed Mary's heart. And Mary became somebody different than the person she was before my grandmother showed her some love. I'm here to tell you today, a lot of us are different people than we were before God showed us His love. Amen. A lot of us today, we didn't have to try to change ourselves. I love when a preacher gets in the pulpit and tells the church full of people how they need to change themselves. I say, preacher, preach the love of God, and the change will come. Hallelujah. Because when God's love is manifest toward us, it cannot help 
but bring about change. Well, glory to God. Robin Williams is a famous actor and comedian. He played the part of an armed services radio personality who encouraged the U.S. troops during the Vietnam conflict with his uh, raucous personality and his entertaining presentation of the news. His famous sign online being, and also the title of the movie, Good Morning Vietnam. Remember? Amen. Well, like his character today, I bring news that should excite, encourage, inspire you. Uh, for everybody that's present to hear, for everybody that might hear this message by tape, I have good news. And let me, like Robin Williams in the movie, preclude my message by saying, Good morning, whosoever. Hallelujah. It's not limited to Vietnam today. It's not limited to one conflict or the other, one country or the other, one race or the other, one skin color or the other. But glory to God, the good news of the gospel is available to whosoever. Ever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. What's so good about it? <laughs> the good news is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Glory to God. My friend, I'm here to tell you, you this morning, you this afternoon, you listening to this tape, you are a whosoever. Hallelujah. You qualify for this benefit. You qualify for this message, glory to God, in Matthew 10, verses 32 and 33, Jesus said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father, which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father, which is in in heaven. I'm here to tell you, child of God, straight, gay, cross-eyed, or bow-legged, it doesn't matter. Jesus said it plain and simple. Whosoever shall confess me, him will I confess. Hallelujah. I confess him this hour. I confess him this moment. I deny him not. Let the world know that this Day man is a servant of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I believe God's word more than most preachers do. Because I believe God will honor his word on judgment day. And my confession will stand sure. And my master will confess me as his own. Amen. Now, John chapter 4 verses 13 and 14 we read the story of the woman at the well. And Jesus is having a meeting with this young lady. Her life is not what many would assume it should be. And yet in the course of their conversation, the Lord says to her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Hallelujah. I want you to know that according to my Bible, Jesus Christ was speaking at that moment of the baptism and indwelling of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. In, uh, in John chapter 7, verses 37 through 39, the Bible declares, In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the Scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him, which they that believe on him, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet 
glorified. Hallelujah. When Jesus was speaking to that little woman at the well, he was speaking of the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And he said, whosoever has access to this water. Hallelujah. Anybody that wants it can have it. Glory to God. There are no restrictions. There are no confinements. My Lord, have mercy. Glory to God. Revelation 22, verse 17. <clears throat> the word of the Lord declares as well. If I can find it for you real quick here. Revelation 22, verse 17. And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that heareth say, Come. And let him that is a first Come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. Hallelujah. I got good news, but it's not for Vietnam. I've got good news, and it's not for the U.S. of A. I've got good news, and it's not for Caucasian races. I've got good news, and it's not for African races. I've got good news today, my friend, and it's not for men only. I've got good news today, and it's not for ladies only. Hallelujah. I've got good news, and it's not for the skinny, nor is it for the fat. It's not for the all. It's not for the short. Glory to God. It's not for the good. It's not for the bad. It's not for the holy. It's not for the profane. It's for whosoever will. Let him come. Hallelujah. You are today a whosoever. Good morning, baby. Good morning, whosoever. Hallelujah. My Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Mankind prior to Jesus Christ had very limited access to God, separated by a heavy woven curtain between the altar and the Holy of Holies in the temple that God had instructed His people to construct in Jerusalem. And as Jesus Christ hung on the cross, as we read in our text this afternoon, as the words fell from his lips, I've done all I can do. It's finished. It's over. I've completed my task. I've finished my course. And as his spirit was torn from his body, as life leapt out of him and death grabbed hold of that mortal frame, my Bible said that the veil in the temple was rent in twain. It was torn in two as though the very fingers of God had come down into that holy place and grabbed hold of one side and then the other of that old uh, curtain that had separated humanity from himself. And God, the price having been paid for you and I, God tore that curtain one side to the other and lay it on the ground in the holy of holies because from that day forward he wanted of the message to be clear uh, that whosoever will may come. Uh, no longer is it the high priest. Uh, no longer is it the righteous one. Uh, no longer is it a representative of the people. But now the people themselves have access to the very presence and throne of God. Glory to God. My Lord, think about it. Ain't that exciting? Praise God, whosoever. Good morning, whosoever. I got good news for you, whosoever. You qualify to have access to God today. Glory to God. Amen. In Acts chapter 2, verses 38 and 39, the apostle Peter made it very clear what one must do in order to be saved. The Bible declaring... Then said Peter unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children, to them that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Well, God doesn't call homosexuals, oh, doesn't he? 
That's funny because everything I've read says whosoever. Come on now. That left the door open to the gay community. I don't, I don't see where God had any requirements on there that would bar me from coming. No, whosoever. This good news today is for whosoever will. Whosoever will. Mark chapter 16. Verses 15 and 16. The word of the Lord declares... And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. You see, again, I don't see any prerequisites. Jesus said, whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. If you obey this gospel, my friend, you're going to be saved. Amen. All you've got to do is obey the gospel. But if you disobey it, then he said, but he that believeth not shall be damned. You see, the litmus test this hour is not in how perfect you are, how holy you are, how righteous you are, how good you are. The litmus test, when you get to the pearly gate, St. Peter, the only thing Peter's going to do is look on your soul and see if the name of the Lord Jesus Christ has been applied to your soul in the waters of baptism by reason of your obedience to this gospel message. And my friend, that's all it requires. He ain't going to ask you straight gay. He's not going to ask you lesbian or black. He's not going to ask you short or all of, he's going to want to know, did you obey the gospel? Hallelujah. Amen. It's that simple. How do we stay saved? In Romans chapter 10, the Apostle Paul tells us, verses 9 and 10, many churches use this to tell us how to get saved, and they're taking the Scripture out of context. Amen. Too many churches preach this. This is how you become a Christian. No, this isn't how you become a Christian. This is how you stay a Christian. Romans chapter 9, verses 9 and 10. No, that doesn't look right. Excuse me. 10, chapter 10, I'm sorry, verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> that if thou shalt confess... With thy mouth, the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. And in this case, the term salvation is not referring to our original born-again experience, but rather to the redemption of the church, which is the time when Christ shall come and he shall physically claim that which he has placed a down payment upon by reason of his Holy Ghost baptism. Amen. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. I know a lot of people today who are able to confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus and who are able to believe in their heart that God has raised him from the dead, that many churches don't want to accept as a child of God. Many churches still want to put the curtain back up inside the Holy of Holies. Hello now. Many churches today still want to separate the people from God. But God, by reason of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, has torn apart that separation, and there is no longer any separation. And now, my friend, whosoever will may come. The gospel of Jesus Christ is an inclusive gospel. The invitation is open to every race, gender, age, socioeconomic class, sexual orientation, gender identification, and so on. Galatians 3, 27 through 29. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. 
There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And if ye be Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Anyone finding the faith to believe this gospel and mustering the courage to obey it can and will be saved. Hallelujah. It's not about who you are, but rather who Jesus is. Hallelujah. I say that a lot in our church. If, if you were around here a lot, you'd hear me say that a lot. Amen. It's not about who you are. It's about who Jesus is. The word of the Lord declaring in Ephesians chapter 2, 8, and 9 verses we hear so often in churches, and I think very few even have a concept of what they mean. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, it's not about you, sister, it's about him. Amen. It doesn't matter what we are, who we are, why we are, what we are. It doesn't matter. It's about Him. You see, while we were still unlovable, while we were still an ugly, sinful, unregenerate people that didn't know to even believe God for salvation, God tore that veil in the temple and made access available to us so that we might come to Him, how? As we were. See, Jesus didn't die like some preachers so He could clean us up and then bring us. Come on now. I would have said, when did the Holy Ghost come? The Holy Ghost didn't come until 50 days after the Passover. The church wasn't born until 50 days later. But while we were still ugly and dirty in sin, without hope, God tore that veil in half and said, come on. Hallelujah. Think about it. He just tore that thing and said, whosoever will, let him come. Praise God. Praise God. That's right. No more separation. You know, and I hate to tell you, church folks, but God didn't tear that old veil down so he could put up a, a lighter weight curtain either. Hello now. Amen. Once that veil was torn, it was torn. And it could never again be replaced. And today I want you to understand, as Robin Williams said in the movie, greeting everybody with his positive, uplifting greeting. Good morning, Vietnam. I have good news, and therefore I say to you, good morning, whosoever. Amen, whosoever. God bless you for being here. We're grateful for all that have made an effort, and I appreciate your hearing the word that God laid on my heart, because as we were sitting there, the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to go ahead and deliver it anyhow. And I said, well, okay, I'll do that.